This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What is the worst product you have ever reviewed? Okay, this is tough. There's a couple in here. I'm gonna go with the Huawei MatePad Pro. Here's why. I think it comes down to expectations. What happened is I reviewed it last summer. This was months after it had come out. It was not available in the US where I was, so it had been out for several months before I actually got my hands on one. I wasn't planning on reviewing one at first, but all of these other reviews had been rolling out and there was this story developing around all of them. And the story went something like this. This is the iPad killer. This is the greatest Android tablet ever made, but it has one flaw. You can't load Google apps or uh, there are many other apps or the Google App Store onto this thing. So it's this amazing piece of hardware, but it doesn't have the software you would expect from every other Android device. You could also get an optional pen with the MatePad Pro. And so I was really interested in this and, and a lot of people were asking for it in the comments. And I thought, why not? Let's, let's try this out. Let's see what it's all about. And when I got it, I was just really disappointed. The narrative of this is the iPad killer, this is the best Android tablet out there, didn't fit with the product I actually saw in front of me. So first of all, the screen. The screen wasn't nearly as good as what Samsung has on there. There was a lot of pixel dimming along the side. Second thing that got me is there was a hole punch camera on the screen. Now on a phone, a hole punch camera makes a lot of sense because you wanna have that front facing camera, but you don't want big bezels. So you punch a little hole in there so it's not too intrusive. On a tablet, you have larger bezels. There was plenty of space to put like the camera on the bezel. Wasn't that big a deal. But instead they chose to take up screen real estate with the hole punch camera. It seemed to me the reason they were doing that is that was the trendy thing to do with phones and so they did it on a tablet, I guess. The other problem was the pixel dimming which happens around edges where the pixels just get darker around the edge of the screen or especially if you're like rounding corners or anything like that. That was happening around the hole punch camera. So my first impressions of the whole thing were it just didn't seem very premium. That alone, that on its own, I could totally forgive. Not having the apps, a little harder to forgive for the average consumer who doesn't want to go in and sideload and figure out how to get these things on there. The thing I could not forgive was the pen, which I thought the pen was horrible. The, it, the lines were all wavy and jaggy and it just wasn't a good experience. Next question. Oh, by the way, my name is Brad. I'm doing a Q&A today. I asked you guys for some questions and you gave me some really amazing ones, like, like this one. If you could only have three devices, counting phones, tablets, computers, e-readers, what would you pick? So as a tech reviewer, I am very spoiled and I get to actually use the products that I want. So one, computer, 16 inch MacBook Pro. Two, drawing tablet, got an iPad Pro. Although I'm still rocking the 2018 iPad Pro, even though I have the new one on loan from Apple. And three, my phone, which is the Samsung Galaxy Note 20. I think it's the 20 from last year. I am 26 and considering a goatee, do you have any comments, tips, or advice? Don't do it, man, just don't do it. Is going to art school worth it or do you think an artist can learn on their own? There's probably about 10 questions like this in various formats. All right, so the first thing you need to know about art is the most important thing is your portfolio. If you have a good portfolio, you will get work. So your degree doesn't matter as much as say a business or a medical degree does. Two, this field in general, is incredibly competitive because there are more people who want to create art and illustration and do this sort of thing than there are jobs for people who want to do it. That means there's there's always gonna be a gap and that also means that it's going to lower the salary somewhat. That's important to know because number three is that school is very expensive, at least here in the US. If you go specifically to an art school, you're gonna come away with six figures in debt. That is a lot of money that you're gonna be paying off for a very long time. Um, but there are some good sides to art school. It's, it's not all negative. For example, if you want to get into certain industries, there are a handful of schools, for example, that cater to animation. You're going to get the specific skills in your portfolio that you're going to need to move on. Also, if you're at that school and you're someone who maybe isn't, for example, like me, I'm not quite self-directed enough to, to learn on my own. I know I run out of steam after starting a new you know, drawing program after a few weeks. I needed the structure of college back in the day to help me get to where I am. School is very good at that. Also going to a school is going to give you connections within that industry. So if you really wanna go into the gaming industry, for example, or you really wanna go into the animation industry, Going to a good school that has a reputation and connection with those businesses that you want to go into 
can be helpful. So when it comes to that question, is art school worth it? I don't know. There are some good things that come from art school, but at the same time, you have to know what you're taking on. You have to know that you are going to be assigning yourself to a certain amount of debt for the next however many years of your life once you come out of school. That is going to affect your lifestyle and how you live. Some other YouTubers who have more experience in some of these industries have made some really good videos. I will link those down below in the description if you want a deeper dive into that question. What is your favorite sandwich? The Reuben. Do you have a day job? No, I don't have a day job. I am a full-time YouTuber. Been doing this for about two years now, full-time. Where do you want to be in five years and what are you doing now to get there? I'm coming for your job, Alex Clark. For years and years and years, my goal was just to be a full-time YouTuber where I didn't have to do work for clients anymore or have a full-time job or a real job and I've made it there. And since then, I've been trying to figure out what, what is my five-year plan? What is my 10-year plan? One of the things I noticed is I do tech videos on this channel. That's fun. This is a great job. I get to try out all the cool toys. One of the things I've always loved doing on this channel are cartoons and kind of goofy things. And I've tried to integrate that into the review somewhat, into the tech content. There's one problem with that, doing an animation uh, spending more time on a script to write jokes or, or do fun things in videos, that takes longer to produce. And in this world of tech, what ends up happening is you're rewarded for speed. You are uh, punished for delivering a review a week after everybody else or a month after everybody else. And by punished, I mean the audience just has moved on. They are not watching those reviews anymore. If I put out my iPad Pro review today instead of two months ago, Nobody would watch it, or at least only a fraction of the people would watch that video. Timeliness with tech reviews is so, so important. So putting out a good video faster is more important than making the perfectly crafted video. So I started a second channel. I talk about it here all the time. It's my art school channel where every video is fully animated, I shouldn't say fully animated, animated to the best of my ability. And each one is an art tutorial or tries to teach you something or has some kind of lesson in that. And the reason I did that is to pursue that passion. So what is the five-year goal? I'm not sure. That channel's growing a lot faster than I expected it to. I was hoping to put out about a video a month. Uh, it's hard to keep that schedule. Um, but it's fun. That That is the passion project that I'm doing on the side um, that that I can do while I'm not doing tech videos. So yeah, I guess that's the five-year plan. I think it would be really cool if 10 years from now, people who are getting into the industry could look back at those videos and say, I was inspired to get into art or start drawing because of something that I did. I think that would be a pretty sweet goal. That would be amazing. What is your favorite cereal? I, I don't like cereal. How do you make money on YouTube? Okay, there are four ways. First, there are ads in front of all these videos. Google shares some of that ad revenue with me. Two, on my website, there are links to like amazon.com where these products are. If you click on one of those links and buy that product or any product after clicking on one of my links, I get a little bit of revenue from that. Three, I have online courses on Udemy about like Procreate and Affinity Designer and Adobe Illustrator. That makes me some money on the side. And four, I have sponsors on these videos. You've probably noticed that. For example, this video has a sponsor, Squarespace. Having a website is great. Having your own domain makes that website even better. But what really makes Squarespace the all-in-one platform for your online presence are all the marketing tools and analytics baked in. Grow and engage your audience with Squarespace's email campaigns. Create powerful email content that matches your website with your existing products, blog posts, and logo so your message is consistent and effective. Quickly understand your audience with Squarespace's website analytics, including page views, traffic sources, time on site, most read content, audience geography, and more. Give feedback on what's working and how you can improve. Squarespace takes all the guesswork out of search engine optimization for your website, which means you'll get found in search by more people more often. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash bragcolbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Oh, this one I get a lot. What do you do with all the devices you review? So it depends. Usually the coolest stuff you've got to send back. So like Apple, some of the really cool laptops, that sort of stuff, uh, that goes back. Some other stuff I buy for myself, like any Samsung product I'm usually paying for myself, some drawing tablets I pay for for myself. Then there's some other stuff which is sent to me that I get to keep. Usually that's like lower price stuff, uh, for example. Uh, and sometimes it's actually 
highly priced stuff, some of the drawing tablets I get to keep as well. So what do I do with them after the review? Well, if I don't have to send them back, oftentimes I will hang on to stuff for a while just so I have something to test or I'll do comparison videos or if I get something wrong, I can go always go back change that up. And then I have a buddy who's really big into reselling on like eBay and, and different storefronts. And so I sell all the stuff I don't need after a while to him. And then he goes out and resells it for me. And the follow-up question I always get is, can you do a giveaway and give it to us? And I would love to. And my DMs are just full of people begging and pleading for me to send them hardware. And I, I just can't fulfill all those requests. I don't have enough stuff. The only time I ever do a giveaway is if the sponsor does the giveaway for me and the main reason is just all of the red tape around giveaways making sure you're doing it legally every country has different rules different states in the united states have different rules not to mention that on any given video my audience here in the u.s may only be 30 or 40 percent of the people watching the video which means if i did a giveaway there's a pretty good chance in fact a better than average chance that I would have to then ship it to another country and pay for all those shipping costs and get that stuff done. So it's just a big complication that I don't deal with. How are you doing, Brad? I'm doing pretty good. Which artist inspires you the most? Okay, ooh, where do I start? So I'm gonna go back in time. When I was growing up, I loved comic books. I collected like Image and Marvel and DC. And I remember walking to a comic store sometime in like the middle of the 90s and there was this new book I had never seen before called Bone. And I like drawing cartoons because I was also really into like newspaper comics. So Bone by Jeff Smith was like a mix between like cartoony art, but it had this really deep Lord of the Rings like fantasy story to it. Usually the cartoony stuff was really for kids. This was like cartoons written for like a much more sophisticated audience. Like I was a kid, I still liked it then, but I think an adult could read Bone and still really appreciate it. When you do product demos, you often draw over grayscale sketch to a semi-transparent in the background. Why? A little behind the scenes magic so you know how I work. Usually what I do is I create a finished drawing, usually on the iPad. I just create the drawing I'm going to use for the review. Part of the reason why is if I'm being completely honest, I am not that great of an artist. And so that sketching process takes me a long time and I churn through it a lot and I try a lot of different things. Having a camera pointed right down at the thing you're using or drawing on, especially a bigger product that where there is a tripod right here and I'm like reaching around the tripod to draw, it is not a comfortable way to draw and I have a very hard time thinking and drawing in, in a lot of those angles, especially when a camera is on me. I personally find it very intense. That is just way too much pressure for me to create a good drawing. So once I have the finished drawing and I've already made the decisions, like what colors am I gonna use? Is it gonna be line art? Are there gonna be lines? Then I take that sketch, I take it to whatever thing I'm reviewing, and then I recreate that artwork on that tablet. And so what you're seeing is me drawing something for the second or third time. If you are not confident in your art, at what point do you call it quits? I almost cried reading this question. Okay, so here's what it comes down to. Are you having fun? If you're not having fun, set it aside. Doesn't mean you have to give up art forever, just set it aside. I know illustrators say it all the time. I'm gonna say it again. Art is one of those things you have to practice. If you're not having fun, you're not gonna wanna practice. So go back to what originally got you excited about creating art. Try to remember that. Was it creating characters? Was it writing the stories? Was it just something that you did privately? I know in this day and age, we all like to post our stuff on the internet. And we like to get feedback and we want to be like social media stars. When I was a kid, I loved drawing art. I was really into it, but there was no social media. So there was nobody to look at my art other than my friends and family. I went to college. I studied mainly graphic design. I did take some illustration courses, which I really enjoyed. When I got out of school, I got into website design and UX design. And for a very long time, I gave up on art. That wasn't my career. But then I found ways to incorporate some some like little illustrated pieces and icons into the, a lot of my graphic design work and I slowly started to get back into it. Then I accidentally started a YouTube channel and I did some reviews and people liked the reviews and then I was like, oh, I've gotta become a better artist and 
that brings me to where I am here. So putting your art aside for a while if you're not enjoying it is okay, and then rediscovering it later as something you love to do is totally okay too. Do you ever try traditional media? Maybe try some new things. Ooh, so in my last answer, I talked about how in school I took some illustration classes. So back in the day, I loved drawing in pencil. We also did some marker drawings and things like that. In recent years, I've completely abandoned traditional stuff, but I, I have been playing with pencil. I, I dug out some of that stuff, so you might see some tutorials on my other channel about that in the future. So those are my questions. You guys asked some amazing ones. Thank you for watching. Totally appreciate it. If I didn't get your question, I'll probably do this again in a couple months or next year or something, occasionally. Let me know if you like the format down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.